guys long time no see and today i thought i'd make a quick video because i had an afternoon free so it's going to be a twin peaks video and i know twin peaks the return aired donkeys ago but i'm still thinking about it and i bet many of you are too so today i wanted to make a video called five things that still bother me about twin peaks the return and when i say bother me i mean both things inside of the show and outside of the show that I either can't understand or that I'm just curious about or that I don't like and so <laughs> so here here I go number one so number one is the difference between Tammy and Tamara if you've read Mark Frost's books where Tammy slash Tamara played a significant part you'll know that the character of Tamara slash Tammy <laughs> I'm still confused about what to actually call her um, was very different from Mark Frost's perspective than she was from David Lynch's perspective now I've heard several things after the fact such as oh David Lynch didn't use any of Mark Frost's material he just he just took his books and just like ripped it up and chucked it away. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure that isn't true. <laughs> However, I think David Lynch had pretty significant thoughts about who he wanted Krista Bell to play and how he wanted her to play it. And because that role was most appropriate for her, I think, I think he just decided that it was worth altering some aspects of that character to to fit his own vision and to fit the actress Krista Bell because I think if she had played it any other way it might not have come across as genuinely as it did she might not have gelled with that character or portrayed that character as well and because I don't think that she is primarily an actress I think that her vocation is actually a singer and that acting may have been something she was not as skilled in as some of the other actors on the show are as trained in um, then maybe making that character a little bit more like Krista um, and less like Mark Frost's Tamara was a good idea but it is something that still bothers me and when I go back to the books and listen to that Tamara's voice it is a little bit different to the voice of Krista Bell's Tamara slash Tammy <laughs> number two so number two is the David Bowie voice saga we don't have to talk about you at all so so I guess if you know anything about the show you'll know that in the return we did not hear David Bowie's original voice there was a voiceover man who came in and played that part what I believe to be true, what I still believe to be true to this day, because I haven't read or heard anything that contradicts this, is that David Bowie said he did not like his portrayal of the southern accent and he was embarrassed about it and he therefore did not give permission for his voice to be used. Now that to me sounds like a crock of... <laughs> it sounds like a made-up thing that you come up with just because you don't want to say what the truth is so what was the truth what could have been the truth David Bowie was dying at the time he had terminal cancer could he have been just a little bit more protective about his own legacy or is there a possibility that there are even more sinister reasons for his not wanting to have his voice heard Maybe he had some kind of falling out with David Lynch. That is something that I haven't heard, but it's a possibility, I guess. Um, it just seems so strange. One thing I did think about when I was coming up with the idea to do this video, and I thought, well, what, what should I talk about in regards to this, is that when I first heard the voice of a guy that did the David Bowie bit in The Return, his voice sounded significantly younger to me. Um, and then I started thinking, well, is that done on purpose? <laughs> is that some kind of theory that I need to be looking into? Who knows? Yeah, but it does still bother me a little bit. Um, mainly because I don't think that 
the voices match exactly and it's just a little bit jarring to hear them to know that that's not David Bowie. You can tell that that's not his voice, particularly in the longer scene where, with Teapot Machine. Sorry, I know a lot of people don't like using the teapot analogy. Mm. Number three. Number three. Number three. Okay. Number three is what the heck is that little melting silver thing? I know that's probably an insignificant thing. <laughs> to most people regarding plots and theories and what have you but that melting little silver thing you know what I mean just bugs me just bugs me number four number four is behind the scenes Lynch and one thing that bothers me is when I was watching the behind the scenes stuff with um, all the cast and crew and David Lynch directing and them talking about how the episodes were going to pan out and what their plans were. Lynch says one comment, um, he gets pretty annoyed actually. I don't know if that's... <laughs> I don't know if that's like how he's like all the time. If he's like... if he has to get to that state of anger to get things done. But basically, at one point he says um, why something like, I can't exactly rephrase it right now, but he says something like, um, if we had more time, I could have gone more dreamy. Um, and I think he was referring to what a lot of people call the White Lodge, where the fireman lives, where Andy visits. Um, I think that's what he was referring to. Um, regardless of what he was referring to, the fact that he said he wanted to go more dreamy makes me think, well, what if he had been allowed to just do what he wanted without sort of anybody um, weighing in? Without anybody telling him that he was time restricted or that it wouldn't play out to audiences? What would we have ended up with? Would it have been more like a Inland Empire kind of thing? Would it have been as abstract as some of his shorts. I think with some of Lynch's biggest successes, it is the editing that has made that difference in how it plays out to a wider audience. And so perhaps it was right that they pushed down on Lynch like that. But at the same time, I still wonder like, what would it have been like? Could they have let him go and just filmed everything and pay for everything and then at the end of the day if they wanted to cut it they could have cut it and then given us the extras later on david lynch being dreamy is something that appeals to me <laughs> number five now <laughs> number five is dougie and when i say dougie i mean cooper because cooper is not Dougie, although we all refer to him as Dougie because that's who everybody thinks that he is throughout the return. But he's actually Cooper. <laughs> Got that. So what bothers me about Dougie is why they made that choice to have the hero of Twin Peaks, one of the heroes of Twin Peaks, be in a state that is verbally non-communicative which is um, emotionally stunted, which is frustratingly trapped in a body that can't do the things that we know that our hero used to be able to do, and have this play out for the entirety of the season instead of just for a few episodes. Um, like, I think many fans were expecting it just to last for a few episodes, and when it continued, that was kind of difficult to accept. I know a lot of fans love Dougie slash Cooper. I know a lot of people sort of warmed up to Dougie and they found him hilarious and they found him um, inspirational and the fact that he is so different from the Cooper that we once knew and yet he achieves so much as that stunted character, as, so as someone who is um, subjugated by magical forces I guess uh, <laughs> so I so I understand that there are two sides to this coin 
of loving Dougie slash Cooper, of finding it frustrating that we didn't get more of the I am the FBI Cooper. I would just love to know, you know, why they made that choice and also why this bothers me again is because recently I saw that um, Kai McLachlan had posted on Twitter um, regarding the Dougie situation, regarding the character and why he wasn't playing the full Cooper and he said that he didn't want to say too much about it, he didn't want to give it all away and I guess that's to preserve the the beauty of what we actually were given um, but he said that initially Cooper was more alive or something he was more Cooper than what we saw in the return what we got in the return so I guess maybe there were some changes made maybe instinctively um, Lynch and Frost felt this was a better way to play it maybe it, maybe that anticipation of finally finding Cooper return was just what the audience needed what the audience needed to respond to right at the end of the series um, I don't know I don't know it just still bothers me <laughs> it still bothers me because just only because I think only because we got so little of the real Cooper and I guess um, I just wanted more of the real Cooper because I love him. <laughs> that's so sad. Oh, yeah. But well, that's it really. Thank you for watching today and you can follow me on Twitter at the vlog lady. Um and see you later. Bye. Oh, by the way, I did not rip up my beautiful book. It was just um performance art, call it. <laughs> okay.